episode 011, episode 11, Mesoamerica, Mexico's Forgotten Empire. My friend, obviously uh, our parents are native to the state of Michoacán in Mexico, but do you know of Michoacán's forgotten legacy, where the indigenous warriors who they are i don't i don't uh obviously i know you know their name los puripechas los puripechas but i don't know much of them at all yeah well until you mentioned it uh last summer like a few months ago yeah i think you mentioned it and you were like bro los puripechas are bad fucking ass yeah i had z include again uh, I mentioned it in the podcast we had with the Olmecs. I thought of I thought of ancient Mexico and I thought of the the Aztecs. Obviously, the Aztecs we learn about them in school as well, with the uh, Spanish conquest and how they colonized the Americas. And that's honestly, I thought that all of Mexico was all oh, that the, their indigenous population was los Aztecas. Boy, was I wrong! And it just goes to show that fucking history is so beautiful and history is so fucking rich and it's broken up into fucking ah uh, fuck hundreds of different tribes maybe not hundreds maybe maybe hundreds but tons of different ethnic groups and how they form their own cities their own populations their own empires but we're going to be going into uh, which is modern day Michoacan, uh, modern day Mexico Michoacan. The indigenous people of there were the Puripecha, and the Puripecha is is translated to commoner. It's translated to commoner, so obviously in the hierarchy systems, it's probably associated that they didn't call them the empire themselves weren't called the Puripecha okay. Empire. Now, they are known and referred to as the Tarascan Empire because that is the name that the Spanish gave us when they colonized us. That's, mm -hmm. I don't know why it stuck either because Tara, uh, that Tarascan means father-in-law. Hmm. So people don't know why that name stuck, but that is the name that's associated with the Puripecha. However, the true term to what I think the correct term to call this empire is the is the Irichiqua Tintunzani Empire. The Tintunzani was the capital, was the center point of this empire. So it's, and the Irichiqu and Irichiqua means uh, the kingdom of Tintunzani. So Irichiqua Tintunzani Empire is the, I think the correct name for the Puripechan Empire or the Tarascan Empire. It's the indigenous name. There is still people in Michoacan that refer to themselves as Puripecha. Holy shit. Too. So the indigenous, uh, the indigenous uh, culture is still surviving to this day. Have you ever heard of, uh, of um, people say, and maybe this might, this, maybe this podcast might answer my question, but have you ever heard people say que, que la raza de Michoacan tiene la, la sangre pesada? I do. Yeah. So you think it comes from this? Or which which means um, yeah, just basically the the people of Michoacan have uh, how do how, how would they say that? I don't just, know, like the they're like dickheads. Yeah, just like it, it, not like, necessarily like they're assholes, but like they're like they have strong characters. I think yeah, you know? like a strong character, like a yeah yeah. yeah. They, they have a strong character. That's what that <laughs> term it's, means. It's weird, but I have heard it and. Yeah, I have heard it. Like, and, que son bien cabrones. Yeah, so then, uh, and then also, Tarascan, you know, a lot of the songs, you know, El Tarasco, El Tarasco, yeah. El Tarasco, and that's, I'm guessing this is, that's what it means, right? Yeah, El Tarasco, that's, it's referring to the indigenous group of Michoacan. See, a lot of people don't know that, and it's one of those things that, you know. Like El Tarasco? From, yeah. Y soy de Michoacan? Yeah. Like, it's yeah, referring to the, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. That's dope. Like, oh, I mean, yeah. honestly, I like that song better even now. <laughs> exactly. That's Me dope. too. Uh, fucking, again, this Puripechan Empire, it's the forgotten empire of Mexico. The reason why I say it is that it virtually, nobody really knows about it. And virtually there is little information about this empire. And we'll uncover as to why that is. But for the meantime, 
I know how much you like your timelines. So I made a very vague timeline to just kind of get you understanding what time period we're working with. So settlers started inhabiting the region around 150 BC, again, in modern day Michoacan. However, the Tarascan origins, like the Olmecs, are lost to the winds of Mesoamerica. It's very little information about them. But we can trace a sophisticated culture, which begins around 1000 AD. So about, um, you know, a yeah, little yeah, over a yeah, thousand yeah, years yeah. ago. And that's when a sophisticated culture begins. So that's when you see the uproots of, of the of the Puripechan Empire. Now, both the Tarascans and the Aztec empires flourish around 1350 AD. That's the height of both of their empires. And they both collapse around 100, uh, about 1520 AD by the Spanish. The Aztecs won't cover, the Aztecs fell first and then came the Tarascans. But I just gave very vague dates. But okay. they, they do have pretty uh, accurate dates. Again, the Spanish have very good records as their co as for their conquest. But that's just the timeline so you can get it in your head. However, the origin of the Puripecha people is surrounded by a lot of complexity and mystery for two reasons. One, the people is composed of different native ethnic groups, all with their own various dialects and beliefs. And two is what we kind of already went through is simply because of lost knowledge. However, a large part as to why we have records of the Tarascan culture is due to a document called La Relación de Michoacán. Obviously, there's a, other different forms of records. But La Relación de Michoacán was a document most likely by a church friar, Jerónimo de Alcala. And this document is filled with a abundance of information that we'll go over later. You can, um, I think, uh, the University of Michoacan website or a website like that Which has one? all the doc. It has a document for free. So, but it is in Spanish. I'm not sure if there is an English version for free, but you can get a book of it on Amazon. The Dope. English translation of La Relación de Michoacan. I get that. I think it's three. I think it's three different. Uh, books or chapters or three different uh documents uh you have you know your first one the second one has fucking like 30 chapters over 30 chapters i think and then the third one has a fucked on like 15 chapters or so but it has it and that tells you we'll go over as to why we have la relacion de michoacan document later but that's that's the most critical source of information we have for the Puripecha, for the Puripechan Empire. or And again, I'm going to say, when I say, I'm going to say Puripecha, Tarascan, and the Irichiqua, Tintunzani, they're the all, same. yeah, they're all the same empire. Puripecha is referred to as the people. Tarascan, again, is the term that the Spanish gave Los Michoacanos. And the Irichiqua, Tintunzani is most likely what they were called because that's what their capital was was a, was centralized around. Now, let's talk about a little bit of the complexity that is associated con los Tarascans. Now, again, they have a very isolated language different from other Mesoamerican cultures, hinting at a possibility of non-local origins, a possibility of them migrating from South America and inhabiting this region. And I'll show you why. Now, I know it's kind of weird to be like, what? Los este, they're possibly not non-native to Michoacan. So what you're seeing right here is a map and the colors mean different dialects. So the Mesoamerican languages are referred to dialectos, dialects, um, not necessarily an established form of, uh, of a language, I think. But... Right here, you have uh, modern-day Michoacan, and all around it, you have your your stable versions of Mesoamerican dialects. Okay. And they're obviously the different shades are 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 grouped in four main languages. Um, the Aztecs, for example, spoke uh, Udo 
Uto Aztecan. Uto Aztecan. Yeah, uh, then you have Macromine, which is what the mines usually speak spoke of. And then you have the Tarascans, completely different with all around all, all around there's there's nothing similar to their to their dialect. And then you do have, you know, colas to the Central America. Yeah. Uh l- dialects that are similar to the Tarascan dialect. Now, I don't I don't speak dialecto or nothing like that. This is just kind of what my assumption is what my what my opinion is of it. Okay. But I'm going to leave this up because we're going to need it here later. That's, that's pretty cool. Like the how, you know, look at this. There is over 20 established dialects on here. It just shows how diverse the indigenous population was. So why did they, do you know why they group it in four? I don't know why they group it in four necessarily. Like, does um, that mean that? Does that mean, for example, let's just look at the Jocaltecan, the very at the top. Uh-huh. So does that mean that the Yuman and the Serian, it's basically almost the same or what? what is Very similar, okay. yes. Like, yes. You think um, they understood each other? Yes, they did. Oh, okay. and And actually, a lot, I don't know if this is correct, but a lot of the indigenous people knew multiple indigenous dialects. And we'll find out that Los Puripechas ended up leaving their native tongue, their native dialect, and and the kingdom of the of the Irichiqua. They ended up leaving their native tongue and adopting their Puripechan dialect, huh. which is pretty. It, it, show, it goes to show how how fluid all this language was throughout the region, and how in reality they they. I'm sure several, I'm sure the populations knew more than one, even more than two dialects. Because again, they all had, they all, there was a very rich, what do you call it? There was a very rich um, trade network with, between all these different okay. cultures. Now, now, the language is not the only mystery. Pottery again, um, of the possibility of the Puripecha being non-native to what is the region of Mexico, possibly coming from South America. Now, the language is not the only mystery. Pottery between South American cultures and the Puripecha are very, very similar, almost identical. And it's the same thing with their metallurgy. They have the same, they have the same bowed blades at the bottom. I don't have a picture, but I'll pop it up right here. I actually did have pictures showing the similarities, but I don't want to show them because they're non they're not pictures from the Puripecha. So I, I don't want to show something that's not accurate to a Puripechan okay. pottery. So how what are they then? Or I guess what do you maybe I didn't understand that. I had photos well I, I, I just had photos but they weren't from the Puripecha. So I I didn't want to show them because they were just like no just... I, there were just other pots not, oh, not from them okay okay, okay. We, we'll find I get we'll, what you mean now. yeah we'll find um that like the information like the information um the Puripecha you don't have much I'm telling you, you don't have much information from them you don't have much artifacts from them and I can't really find a picture so we'll probably just have to input it later okay. just just remind me. Now, what? this could be a coincidence. This could be a coincidence and a result of, of something that is a common theory that's, or a common action that's found throughout history is just historical bias. You know, it just, this language just didn't get noted down and stored. Now, to say that an ancient culture from South America migrated to Central Mexico and inhabited the region does sound like a stretch to me. Again, just because you have such a diverse and it's very fun to think about. There's a lot of theories that the Puripecha aren't native to Mexico, but look at the white regions. Those are unclassified extinct languages and you do have that around the Puripecha. So it, again, that as far as the language goes, it's probably just historical bias. We just didn't have records of it. We just didn't choose to have records of it. And later we'll find as to why a possible explanation of that as well. And as far as the pottery and the metallurgy, 
Well, like I said, Mesoamerican and South American cultures, there's an abundance of resources out there that show how rich the trade network was. There was constant communication with pretty much all of the populations in 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 uh, North and Central and South America and the Mesoamerican cultures. That's crazy how that white is very uh, vast. Like it's uh, mm-hmm. it's spread out weirdly. Like yeah. you, usually you just think it would only be in one spot, but like it's in what, Baja California and then... Uh, that would be Guerrero, modern day Guerrero. Yeah, Guerrero. And then over there, what is that, Matamoros? Or mm. sorry, Tamaulita, Tamaulipas? I think so. Not Matamoros. Matamoros is a city, right? Yeah. I don't know. And then, what is that down there, like, Mexico kind of city? Over uh, here? El Estado de México. No, right no, El Estado de México, that's uh, Azteca, Azteca territory. Okay. So no, I was have... just wondering what that, what that is. Yeah, what? that one right there in the Over middle. here? Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. Toluca or something like that. I don't know. Uh, Veracruz is over there, no? I don't know uh, much of the, where the states align the, the region of it. Yeah. But, but yeah, uh, but you can see how... We didn't even like, we didn't even categorize a few, a few, or sorry, not we, but civilization mm-hmm. or the Spanish, I guess, didn't didn't write down everything. Um, however, Michoacan in Nahuatl means the place of fishermen, referring to Lake Pátzcuaro. We we've been there when we were younger. Now, Pátzcua- Lake Pátzcuaro, it's a rich and beautiful landscape with food sources all year long. Not only that, but they also farmed on the lake with terraces like you see in, um, like you see the Aztecs doing, and near it as well because of the moist soil levels. But I'll, we, um, before we get into Tintunzani and that, and that lost or that forgotten empire. There is actually uh, a city that is much older than modern day, or I guess than what we're going to be talking about, much older than that, still in the same region of Lake Pascuaro called Angamoco. It was just discovered 10, uh, like around in the last 10 years because of LIDAR scans. And the city, yeah, and that city covered an area of over 26 square kilometers, bigger than Teotihuacan being only 21 squares kilometer the city again is called angamuco and it was on the decline when the puripecha empire was on the incline uh, yeah when it was still forming now again this area is still being uncovered however so we're gonna know more about it in the, in the near future but it was a massive fucking city massive right here you see uh uh michoacan Ah, fuck, I forgot what they call them, but it's a, it's like a rectangle terrace with a pyramid on it. Right here you have it, but all this fucking region here is a, a lost city that's still being worked on. Right and now. where is this? This is, again, Michoacan, modern-day Michoacan. This is Lake Pátzcuaro. Oh, I, okay. We, when we visited, we visited this upper region over here, close to Tintunzani, the the yeah, previous capital yeah. and then Angamoku was this entire region over here. Look how massive that is. Holy and again, that's lost to time. But it was again much older and was on the decline as this was as uh, our civilization that we're going to be talking about is on the incline. That little area that I was showing you, you can f- see a more clear two pyramids here mm-hmm. and then a large square terrace kind of how we see in San Lorenzo with the Omex. You see how they built like Mm -hmm. enormous terraces. It was kind of like that. Great fucking, uh, uh, that's so exciting. If once we go back to our hometown, we should, we should visit this site. It's, it's not that far from us. Oh, a hundred percent. I think, I think it's so dope how, uh, you know, like with this whole history stuff that it's so close to us where why not? Mm-hmm. Even La Ciudad de Mexico, you know? Yeah. I think that's going to be 100% on my plan. And oh, yeah. studying where I'm going to go because I usually just travel just to go see stuff. But if you can travel and maybe find a dope-ass library where you can get a book, you know, that maybe told you some 
Yeah. You know, some, like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, we've been to Spain multiple times. They have an abundance of researchers of their conquests of the Mexico. Americas. Uh-huh. It would be cool to see, you know, just, just to yeah. see it, you know? It's dope. Obviously, it was a bunch of fucked up shit that was going <laughs> on. When the indigenous people got colonized, but it's still a very important part of history and yeah. all these cultures. It Mexico is what it is today, whether you like it or not, whether it has a, uh, you know, a bloody history because of all this conquest and colonizations. But the Irichiqua Empire traces its origins to the Wakusecha bloodline. Uh, the Puripecha word, Wakusecha uh, means eagles in the Puripecha dialect. And they were actually not local. According to La Relación de Michoacán, they were part of a northern Chichimeca tribe and migrated to Lake Pascuaro. Uh, the Chichimeca inhabited uh, northern... The Durango? Northern... Uh, Durango or something. A little bit of Zacatecas as well. Chihuahua. Um, no, Chihuahua is more up there. Yeah, about this region right here. They, sure. the, these were nomadic indigenous people. And let me tell you, they were fucking warriors, bro. When the Spanish conquered, this is just a side note, when the Spanish came into Mexico and they conquered basically all of it, it took him until the late or middle 1600s, 16th century to finally defeat the Chichimecan tribes because they're a bunch of, actually kind of similar to the Native American tribes here in the United States. There are a bunch of small nomadic indigenous tribes that would be, that would just ambush the Spanish. Kind of these ambush uh, go in, harass them, and just dip real quick. Oh. And it was a problem for the Spanish forces, dude. Let me fucking tell you. And these Chichimecan tribes, uh, at the fall of the Toltec Empire, it's, it was a, another great civilization that we would definitely talk about. Um, you see the Chichimeca and Toltecs migrate back down to modern-day Aztec, to not at the time frame that we're talking about, to the Aztecs and then the Puripechas. But these were some fucking warriors, dude. You should pull up a, a like a another picture down there of Mexico. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe so we can like not just <laughs> not just guess. Oh, look real quick, like this. Uh no, one that actually shows the states. Uh okay. I'm just fucking pop up uh maps. I guess. Oh, you like using Apple Maps? Fuck. There'd be Google. I guess something like that, yeah. Yeah, so again. Whoa. Where is uh oh here we are. This is the region that we're talking about right here. Modern day Michoacan, the Aztec Empire would be right here, and they actually the Aztecs actually at one point had most of Guerrero and most of the central uh lower central areas of Mexico. Now, I'm glad you brought this up because while we are, we're, while we're um, on this dialect, again, the, and a very oversimplification of Mesoamerican civilizations, we have that Mesoamerican scholars really attribute the success of Mesoamerica to five different civilizations and they give and obviously as we see here there's over 20 registered dialects there is you know thousands of inhabitants throughout of inhabitant little uh centers throughout mm-hmm. here there's tremendous amount of different civilizations and different tribes so and they all have one part to play in what modern day mexico is today but the five civilizations that you can really accredit the ingenuity and the advance of Mesoamerica comes to five. And they go in order. Or four, sorry. In no, what? five. Yeah, five. Five uh, civilizations. In order? Yeah. Okay. The Olmec, the Zapotec, the Mayans, the Toltec, and then the Aztecs. The Actually, I actually had that. This this picture right here? Yeah. You, you have the Olmecs kind of uh, right at the bottleneck before getting down to Central America right here. You have the Zapotecs that migrated to the Pacific. Is that the Pacific? Does it go from Mexico? That's the Pacific, no? Right there. Yeah. 
And uh, then you have the Mayans. I think, this is just a speculation, I think that at the fall of the Olmecs, and the fall of the Olmecs, a lot of the Olmec civilizations converted into kind of that Mayan mind because they inhabit almost relatively the same uh obviously the mines are higher up on the yucatan peninsula but they inhabit pretty much the same area and i think that a lot of these people went up and started a new civilization called the toltecs now again the chichimeca tribes were fucking devastating and i think that was eventually what brought the toltecs to their knees again that ambush hit and run type of ta warfare tactics mm -hmm ended up being the collapse of the Toltec Empire. And speculation, of, again, uh, and oversimplification, super over oversimplification, because there's it's super complex, like the how these civilizations merge into others and the warfers, and they all fucking had wars with each other. And then you come down and they find, and they founded uh, the Aztec Empire. And again, they founded the, the Puripecha Empire as well because the Aztecs have the same origin. Uh, the Chichimeca tribes migrated down and founded the Aztec Empire. And again, there's over 22 registered languages, over 40 different tribes, at least seven great civilizations. And now modern day Mexico has 32 states and all with their own, you know, respective culture and indigenous tribes. I'm I'm actually very excited about Mesoamerica and I'm very excited to in the future of course dive into their you know their specific wars and how everything breaks up but it's it's pretty it's pretty legit and again right here you have the Tenochtitlan and over here you have Los Puripechas now oh fuck I was very I was looking at that map so wrong <laughs> this one no, the, the oh the other one left. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought the top, the tip of it was more on the border, but no. Okay, okay, now yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, I was like, what the? No, we're okay, yeah, the region we're focusing is, is uh, over here. Now you know a uh, uh, a quick side note. I was watching this video or a documentary about. That I think I might get this wrong, but I think seventy percent of Mexico is not inhabited. Where it where it's not um yeah basically it's not being used mm, it's... and because of the region and actually we're lucky that you know our parents from were from there but there's this like nice strip of of where what what's the most richest areas of of uh, Mexico and uh, where we seem to be in that same middle I think it's just tips of I might get it wrong but it's just kind of right in the, right there in the middle where mm -hmm. where there's a lot of greens that's why when you go more north it's more desert and then more south it's too uh too dense a lot of yeah forest forest and shit and you can't really build you can't it's, mm -hmm. uh so like i said i might i'm just going off the top of my head with no um without checking this but i think they said that when uh, mexico was being built when you when mexico first tried making their first train system i don't know mm -hmm. when it was uh just from the like the coastal line to mexico city or across the state i can't i can't remember when they did one of them usa had already done all the usa's um pacific high or what, what is it called their, I, yeah their, their, their yeah. union pacific yeah Union Pacific, they 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 had already done all of their shit, and it's because wow. of that terrain is so hard mm -hmm. that like, you know, it's too warm for you know asphalt or like concrete or mm -hmm. this and this, and you're going through fucking like very you know difficult terrain. Yeah, and actually, is there's actually a train being built right now uh, all across the Yucatan Peninsula connecting all the ancient sites together so you can go and you can tour a lot of the ancient site a lot of the ancient mayan sites hmm. it's uh i'm i don't know if it's being built right now or if it's currently still in the in the prototype stages but yes mexico has a very dynamic landscape and ultimately i think that's why the aztecs and all the 
people who tried to conquer Mexico had so much trouble with it, ultimately, I think. Yeah, I think that was a, uh, another reason why it was very hard for Mexico to mm. to progress as a country, you know, because they had to go through different types of, diff, you know, of difficult terrains. Mm -hmm. um, and as USA, you know, you go up north and you can basically build and do anything up north. And, you know, you just have different climates to work with. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that we covered in the Olmec episode two is even though these terrains are very diverse and crazy landscapes, they were, they were very well inhabited. Again, as we've seen in the Olmec podcast that we did, it was scattered with population centers. Scattered. And now that's all lost to the jungle, to the natural landscape it just consumed everything but let's go ahead and get into the empire into the Irichiqua empire itself now again the Irichiqua founders were the wakusecha family dynasty and they rose from commoners to emperors the wakusecha also as i mentioned earlier abandoned their native tongue which was the chichimeca native native dialect and adopted the puripecha language but and this is a very important, but they still preserved their Chichimeca martial traditions, their warfare tactics. And I'm going to just keep that in mind because I'm going to note something to that later. Now, the uh, now Tariakuri was responsible for the Wakusecha dominion over the Puripecha. By the time he died, Tariakuri was basically the founder of, of the Wakusecha dynasty and ultimately who ended up ruling the Puripecha empire. Now, Tariakuri, when he died, uh, he built his family dynasty and created a capital in Pátzcuaro, a, a new capital, and split the lake basin between his nephews, Iripan, Tangashuan, and his second-born, Hikuaniji. Hikwani, Hikwani, Sorry, these are, again, I don't speak... Like, these are very uh, hard to pronounce. And these three ruled Pátzcuaro, uh, Huatzillo, and Tintunzan, respectively. And if you paid attention there, I said second-born son. What happened to his first-born son, Curatame? Well, he didn't make the cut. His pops murdered him because he was basically a drunken playboy. He didn't take the responsibility of his people seriously. And that didn't sit well with <laughs> with the leaders of the time. And it goes to show how dedicated, you know, you have to be for your people, for your population. You can't have nobody fucking it up for everybody else. And his firstborn son was not the exception. Got him clapped. Damn. Imagine if he existed in 2024. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. Shit. Um, this, however, would change with a new generation of Wakusecha. And a very prominent figure, probably one of the most prominent figures in the Puripecha Empire is Tintin, Tintin Pandakware. Tintin Pandakware ended up taking Tintunzan by force. And although these... And although the, 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 the current state of affairs of, of this empire is very unclear and we don't see, we don't have much evidence, I feel that a sort of civil war happened between these three different city-state capitals because that's ultimately what it was. You had the founder, he created basically a city-state with these, with Pátzcuaro, with Paxaro, Watsio, and Situnsan, and they all res and they all led respectively. And they all led respectively. Um, but some sort of uh, civil war happened, which ended, which again, Tintin Tintin Pandakware, the son of Tanga Shuan, ended up taking um, Tintunsan by force. Now, although, you know, war is never a good thing, especially civil war, it ultimately ended paying off for the Puripechan Empire, and he ended up uniting all, of them. Uniting the Puri, all the Puripecha 
to what a real empire should look like. Mm. No different city states, city states, or and you know being ruled by their independent emperors. He ruled the people and he united all the people together. And he made Tintunzan. He ended up making Tintunzan the sole capital. And here is where we get the source Irichekwa Tintunzan. Here is where it originates again, which means the kingdom of Tintunzan. Now this guy created a full-blown bureaucracy, which the Puripecha badly needed. Again, I'll actually describe it later. But, uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. But for a very brief moment, thanks to Tintin Pandacuare, the Puripecha had the largest empire in northern Mexico, thanks to a new established bureaucracy system, which was thanks to a very well-oiled uh, military machine. And Tintin Pandacuare prized above all else intelligence and reconnaissance and he implemented a spy network all over the border now let's get into the warfare of the puripecha during uh Bef before, before we get yeah. before you get started was this still in the same region right there in Pascuaro and stuff or or are we talking somewhere else no this was still in the same region so the founder okay. founded the the founder, um, what was his name? Uh, yeah, the the Tariacuri founded Pazcuaro. Okay. And then he divided up the lake basin, Lake Pazcuaro, into three different yeah. uh, kind of city states, if you will. Uh, Tintunzan, Huatillo, and Pazcuaro. Now, at one point, at one point, um, the son of Tancho, uh the son of Tangashuan ended up taking Tintunzan. So, and then he ended up uniting the whole lake basin and ultimately all of modern day Michoacan. So yeah, this is the same region right here. This is what we're talking about. We actually visited somewhere up here. And then that lost civilization that through light that we found through lighter is right here. Yep. Now, Tintin Pandacuare was a very ambitious man and he expanded the Puripecha Empire, and inevitably would collide with arguably the greatest empire Mesoamerica has ever seen. Would you care to say who? No, I don't want to get it wrong. The Aztecs. The Aztecs are arguably the greatest Mesoamerican empire. I would have probably definitely, said the Definitely in warfare. Uh, they conquered, they had the largest region of Mesoamerica united. Now, the Aztecs were also on a expansion mission for more territory and resources, and they would be face to face with the Tarascans on their eastern border. So if we look down, down here is where the Puripecha, some sources say that nobody, so there is a, there's a valley right here. Some sources say that nobody owned this valley yet, and the Puripecha went into it. And the Aztecs also went into it. They went, kind of went into it at the same time. Other sources say that the Aztecs were in charge of this valley and the Puripecha pushed into Aztec territory. Mm -hmm. Now, regardless, these events would ultimately clash, would ultimately be the events that led to their confrontations and clash. Now, as a result of the Tarascans pushing into possibly the Aztec territory, and taking this valley from them, mm -hmm. the Aztec leader, which at the time was Ashiakat in this region, he would lead a small garrison into the valley, resulting in taking back a portion of it. Now, despite an already ensuing conflict, Ashiakat, the Aztec leader at the time, he already had his eyes set on Michoacan previously. And he wanted to conquer it. Now, mm. remember me telling you about... Uh, Tintin Pandacuare's spy network system. Yep, yep. Well, that would ultimately pay off. Now, this guy was Damn, not a guy. back in... Yeah. That's dope. You, now, this guy in the, back in the 1300s. Now, this guy, you didn't want to fuck with Tintin Pandacuare, bro. This guy had everything under control, and he knew what was going to come. So, 
being the great leader that he was, he preemptively started to gather his forces. Now, during this time, the Aztecs were already making their way to Michoacan and to the capital. At the time that Tintin Pandacuare was uniting his forces mm -hmm. and gathering an army because he felt that something was going to happen. And he, again, his spy network told him that the Aztecs were coming. Now, when to the Aztecs surprised, they were met with a partially completed Tarascan military. Estimates, later estimated in size, 40 to 50,000 for the Tarascans and 24 to 32,000 for the Aztecs. Again, Tizim Pandakare brought up a, a military force kind of in, kind of out of nowhere. He didn't have much time. The Aztecs were already looking to conquer Michoacan. Now, not only did the Puripecha have an advantage in numbers, but they were able to ambush the Aztecs and completely obliterate them on the first day of battle. When the fighting came to a conclusion on the second day, mm -hmm. the Aztecs' forces were almost completely annihilated. Holy. And the, and you can find you can find the events of this you can find the events of of this confrontation by the account of Diego Duran. He had firsthand experience and interviewed Aztec informants. And he actually later wrote about this in the history of the Indies of New Spain. You can find this document for yourselves. However, let me read let me read you a few things here. This is this is what Diego Duran said and in relationship to this battle. The Aztecs attacked the Tarascan army, but the assault was so unsuccessful that they fell into the hands of the Tarascans. Like flies that fall into the water, at least this is what the Chronicle says, the massacre was so great that Aksayakat decided to withdraw those men who were still alive, alive in order to save at least a few. <laughs> in this encounter, the Tarascans killed Many valiant Aztecs, especially from the military orders called Quachi and Otomi. Among the fallen was a nobleman who was a close relative of the Aztec king and who belonged to, ro to the royal council oh, shit. of the four, which the king's successor was chosen. So he was part of, the, of a team that would choose the Aztecs' successors. Now, when the Tarascan recognized this, when the, Tarax, when the Tarascans recognized this insignia, they carried him to the Aztec camp and deposited his body there. In this way, showing their boldness and demonstrating their contempt for the Aztecs, having mocked their foes, the Tarascans then returned to their own, not wishing to push their victories further. Again, this is by Diego Duran in the History of the Indies of New Spain. They completely dem decimated what is arguably the greatest empire Mesoamerica has ever seen? The Aztecs. Yes. Now, you would think that the Puripecha would use their momentum and continue to push into Aztec territory. However, the opposite happened. And they actually ended up withdrawing from most of their conquered territory and, and, and their expansion efforts and receded their territory to more defensible positions. Uh, and they instead allocated their expansion efforts to reinforcing their borders. Now, this, what I just explained to you, is I think the most critical part of the Puripechan Empire because instead of pushing and instead of having that ambition to push their empire more, they actually withdrew and fortified their borders. Now, this could be as a result of of, right. of, of the fr of being frightened from such a immense scale warfare that they had with their Aztecs, or instead they played it conservatively, which ultimately was was to their favor. Do you think they do? You, they probably knew. Obviously, they knew who the fuck the Aztecs were, right? Yes, they did. They they're when I when I started reading about this, it was very clear that they were rivals that they had very high tensions and ultimately they are the force that kept the aztecs at bay they are the force that kept the aztecs from expanding into northern territories and again at the time 
at the time, the Puripecha were also on their own expansion conquest. They tried going up into Colima, but instead of continuing that, they refrained from that. They said, mm -hmm. you know what? Let's fucking, let's play safe and let's fortify our borders. And they, they receded their border lines to, again, more defensible positions, especially on that eastern border with the Aztecs. Now, the conflict with the Aztecs would come to an end, and tensions eventually did die down a little bit. And they resumed back to trade. But after this war, the Aztecs and the Puripecha were never the same. And the Aztecs often made derogatory remarks to the, to the Puripecha people. And you can find this in the Florentine Codex. Uh, it's basically the Aztecs talking shit about the Puripecha. Damn, they were but her or what? <laughs> Apparently, I would have fucking. Not, I've never. I would never, never talk shit to someone that beat my ass. <laughs> very bad too. Now, the reason, again, scholar. The reason scholars think that the Puripecha defeated the Aztecs so badly was remember me saying that they kept their Chichimeca warfare uh warfare what do you call it heritage yeah well the chichimeca again were ambush fighters they were ambush predators if you will and they fought primarily with bows and arrows now the traditional weapon of mesoamerica was the what do you call the atalato the atlat yeah. something like this which is basically a bat with obsidian blades on it and this was the preferred weapon oh, of the mesoamerican oh. tribes Imagine getting fucking sliced by that. Uh. Which, if you don't know, obsidian can be sharper or is sharper than exacto blades. The blades that surgeons used to cut, you can you can refine obsidian so so tiny or so thin that it's actually sharper than an exacto blade. And I've actually seen. I don't know how true this is, but I've seen that when you cut an incision with a with a with a scalp with a what do you call it a scal a scapula mm -hmm. or a scalp with a uh, the that surgeon blade yeah, with a very it's a very sharp about. surgeon blade when you cut when you cut into something with that and when you compare it to a cut with obsidian the blade looks like a like it like a chain like a like a maw microscopically in this in the obsidian incision is a nice clean incision you want to let her out? Is a nice, clean incision. Now, again, it was most likely in part due to that, to that, to their greater use or preference of the bow and arrow. Fuck that, bro. I'd rather get shot. <laughs> Fuck that, bro. Nah. You know what? Uh, Hell nah. You know what this reminds me? Remember the movie Apocalypto? Yeah. Uh, you know what? Okay. Can you guys do or say what you're going to say? I was just going to mention okay. in that movie, you, you, mm -hmm. they, it's a very graphic movie. Mm -hmm. And they show when you get hit by this and it just fucking mm -hmm. rips uh, you open. I, Fuck that. Do you know what the Apocalypto, that the movie, I, I wanted to bring it up just, mm -hmm. just, to, just to ask you. Do you know what? Um, I haven't watched it. And I kind of want to watch it. I've been uh -huh. wanting to watch it. It's been the back of my head for a while do you know where um who that was or what empire that was or mm, i actually don't no i actually don't know but they actually don't know i haven't watched it in a long time and all i know is that it's a great movie with fucking zero dialogue i don't think they really even spoke once did they no. maybe in the beginning yeah. but but even then it was just very little dialogue yeah they didn't speak at all but but I was just wondering if you, because mm. it wasn't, I think that was just a good movie. No, it wasn't like based on a true story or none of that, right? I couldn't tell you to it's be probably honest just with a good, you. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't tell you to be honest with you. But in continuation with uh, our story, let's get into a little bit of the bureaucracy system that the Puripecha Empire had and why it was probably, again, the Tarascan Empire achieved great heights because of their bureaucracy and their military power. Now, let me show you a picture of their bureaucracy system. 
the irecha would be the king the peta the petamuti would be the high priest and then again you have a smaller council of of lower priest the angatakuri would be basically like the right hand man the the vp the vice president or a secretary then you have the anguaputi which i actually forgot what they are but you see how complex this bureaucracy system is yeah that's which is pretty pretty crazy yeah. of a mesoamerican culture pretty advanced shit and i'll tell you why it's pretty crazy because in comparison to the aztecs the rivals and arguably the greatest empire mesoamerica has ever seen the aztecs had a tributary empire now what a tributary empire is is basically you conquer a group you establish a vice regent or a governor for that group that you just conquered. And every year or every season, they they owe you tribute for allowing them to live. And that's and that's uh, and that's basically that's basically the hierarchy system of it. Oh, you conquer people and they offer you tribute, and then obviously you're the emperor or king, and that's it. You rule over your subjects. The Puripecha did not implement that. Now, now um the tributary empire is basically held by the might of the military. Again, the Aztecs had an enormous military, which is why they could keep their vast network systems. And let me let me show you the... Do I not have a picture? Let me show you... What about this? Let me show you the Aztec empire. This is... All of what the Aztec Empire conquered, all of that, having a tributary empire, you had to have a massive, a massive, massive military to control all of this territory. The Puripechas, if they would have implemented the Puripecha bureaucracy system, imagine how much more successful they would be. Or on the contrary, if the Puripecha would have continued their conquest into Tenochtitlan, Mesoamerica might have a different history as well. That's just a commentary on my part. However, the Tarascan bureaucracy system resembled a system like the Roman Empire. Now, although they are not comparable at all, they have similar qualities and characteristics that make the system a well-oiled machine. Again, when the Roman Empire conquered, you know, the Germanic tribes or ghouls, they implemented a system, a bureaucracy system in those that would eventually where it would work for itself. And they would force the people to speak Roman, the new established, and they would teach them Roman ways and they would completely convert their, their conquered subjects into, into the Roman empire. A, tribu a tributary system does not do that. This is where the Puripecha oh. had similar qualities to an empire like the Roman Empire. Again, they're not comparable. Whatsoever, they they did not the reach, but it's a good comparison. Fucking the Puripecha, mate. Now, as all great empires come to an end. As everything goes up, everything must come down. Yes, sir. The fall of the Irichiqua. Well, to look at the fall of the of the Irichiqua, we would have to go back a few years back to the conquest of the Aztec by the Spanish. And again, we won't go over the exact details because our the Aztecs are gonna get their own episode as well. Another great empire. However, during the Aztec incursions with the Spanish, they sent multiple emissaries to the Tarascans for help to unite their forces against the Spanish forces, which, if you didn't know, Cortez basically was able to unite a lot of indigenous tribes that were against the Aztecs and use them against, against them. Now, with the modern, the modern warfare of the Spanish united with the indigenous populations, which know the terrain, which know the fighting styles of the Aztecs, they were a fucking force to be reckoned with. And ultimately, that's why they conquest. They conquered all of Mexico is because they used a very similar tactic that is used a lot here, which is guerrilla warfare. Other people to fight your wars, have them fight against each other. And whoever wins, once their forces are diminished, you go in and clap them. Again, the Aztecs sent multiple emissaries 
to the Tarascans for help. Now, at this time, uh, what was this gentleman's name? At this time, Titin Panacuares had already passed, and a new ruler by the name of Zanjua, Z- Zangua, uh, Zangua was a new leader of the Puripechen Empire. He turned these emissaries away. Ooh. Now, do you know why the Spanish were able to conquer all of Mexico? It's a it's happened happened in the Amazons, happened in Mesoamerica when foreign people come into them. What do they bring? Disease. Yes, sir. That was also that also played an enormous play because it dwindled the population immensely. And unfortunately, Zuan, Zuanga, the leader of the Puripecha, ended up dying of a disease most likely brought from the Aztec emissaries asking for help. Oh, fuck. And because he died, the Puripechas needed a new leader. It would be Tangashuan II, the same Tangashuan that the first Tangashuan that mm-hmm. gave birth to... Uh, the Pandacuares. Uh, this would be us in the same in the same lineage, Lineage. Mm-hmm. and he assumed power. Now, during his succession, it was already too late for the Aztecs. The Spanish were already besieging mm-hmm. Tenochtitlan, and the Aztecs, being so desperate, they sent a final emissary to the Tarascans. And you know what happened? They asked for Zuanga. Now. They did not, these emissaries didn't know that he had already passed. And when they told Tangashuan II, let us speak to him, he obliged and sent him to sent them to the afterworld so they can personally send oh my God. the message. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Now, with, now, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, as history would be written, the Aztecs fell to. The, fell to the Spanish, and later Tangwashan the second grew curious and started asking questions. Again, he kept the very same spy network, and he had figured out that the Nochtitlan and the Aztec Empire had completely collapsed. Um. So he sent emissaries to exchange gift with Cortez, and they had very brief exchanges. They sent gift to each other's. They knew now, they were next. Exactly. They knew they were next, and Cortez knew that they were next as well. Did did you think Cortez knew about those booty bitches at that that time? Mm-hmm. Had to have, right? Ultimately, I think that's why the name Michoacan stuck, because after Cortez conquered the Aztecs, the Aztecs actually referred to the booty pechan as, I think, uh, the indigenous Nahuatl term is Michoacat, and then thus the Spanish name Michoacan. Now, again, they sent they sent uh, tributary gifts to each other, and Cortez, being the conqueror that he was, he sent an army to meet with the Puripecha. Now, Uh-oh. the succession with Tangashuan II was not a very favorable one, and he was putting fires around the nation, uniting the people once again. And when he finally did that, it was too, too late. late. Cortez had already marched past the borders and to Tintuntani. Now, Tangoshan could not muster up a force, and rather than fight, he opted out for diplomacy, leaving him on his throne as a mere vessel for the state of Michoacan. He w- Tangoshan II ended up being a vessel for the Spanish, and instead of fighting again, Cortez also did not want to fight because he just got done with a gruesome battle. And ultimately, if we speculate, after a gruesome battle with the Aztecs, because the Aztecs put up a fucking fight mm-hmm. against them. They could if, have taken advantage, if, maybe. If the Puripecha would have united a force, ultimately, who knows? It, would they have won? Would they have lost? Dang. We can only speculate. Now... Fuck, it, just just imagine i just i'm just trying i'm just trying to put myself in that in those shoes uh knowing that your rivals just had fallen the aztecs mm-hmm. i'd be fucking scared bro i'd be like fuck yeah and i don't know how i mean i understand diplomacy but like 
dude. Nah, bro. They had a they had an agenda. Mm-hmm. Holy fuck! Now they left with a weird position. Now the Spanish claimed the Michoacan and they claimed it as conquered territory, but Tangashuan the second still ran his empire like normal, collecting taxes for himself and giving the Spanish a small portion. Now, of course, you can't give the Spanish a small portion of taxes. And in in the 1530s, a conquistador by the name of Nuno de Guzman was passing through Michoacán to conquer the West Coast. And he figured out that Tangashuan II was still running his empire like normal. This didn't sit well with the conqueror. And he ended up capturing Tangashuan II, tried him for treason, killed him, and then turned on the rest of the Puripecha people. Now, the conquest of Nuno de Guzman was often associated with genocide. Now, the next events that happened after the true conquering of the Puripecha, you know, again, with the killing of Tangashuan II, a governor and the first bishop which eventually is the first bishop of Michoacán, was brought were brought in to structure and to bring structure and administration to the state when another conquistador wanted to claim a region of Michoacán for himself. Now, the current governor and bishop did not want nothing to do with uh, new conquerors of or the new, you know, this new conquistador wanting to conquer Michoacán. So, they so they ended up so the governor wanted nothing to do with this so to avoid war they created a document and took it to the high council in in Mexico mm-hmm. now the high council of Spain that basically the the Spanish embassy in Mexico hmm. this okay. document was called la relación de michoacán. de michoacán yes okay and it basically told the entire <clears throat> history of the puripechan empire to basically bring a case that this is already conquered territory. You cannot Mm. step in here and conquer it. And it worked. It ruled in their favor. And even though the Irichiqua were dead and Tangashuan II was discredited, his sons would eventually become the governing body in Michoacán as vassals for the Spanish. And some form of Puripecha influence would remain until the start of the 17th century. Now... A very interesting comment from one of my sources, which is Ancient Americas, is that he said that the slow fade or merger of the Irichukla Tintutsani Empire is a big reason for being forgotten. And since the Spanish kept good records of their war conquest, the Puripecha went out on a quiet note. And ultimately, although you would want to see a fight, you know, you know, you would want to see a fight for, you know, to keep your land. Ultimately, Tangashuan II spared his people from bloodshed, which I think speaks a higher character than, you know, what could be described as pride and not wanting to be conquered. He, instead of fighting, instead of putting up a coup up or a rebellion, he just said, you know what, let me, let me avoid more bloodshed, bloodshed and, to my people yes. and let me go. There's, I could see both sides, but didn't, didn't you say that they still, he st- they still did the genocide on the people or no? Uh, late later. Um, now keep in mind, this was not a complete reconquering. It was just basically raping and pillaging a small region of, of, uh, Tsunsinsani after he figured out that they were not paying their true tr- tributary tax to the Spanish Empire. Now, know, on a comment of that, Guzman was so brutal. This fucking conquistador was so brutal that he was actually brought back to Spain in chains and tried for his cruelty oh, on the shit. indigenous people. How cruel do you have to be to be tried for cruelty on a conquering nation? Yeah, it just goes to know how much of a dickhead this guy was. I don't know, man. I think I'd rather put up a fight if I knew that or, you know. Maybe, but look at the Aztecs. They were conquered and and completely dominated. 
their empire, although was a great empire, it it lasted and was completely collapsed. Now the the Irichigua Tinsunsani Empire lasted around 500 years, but because of their diplomacy, some form of Puripecha influence would Still. extend it another 200 years. Puripecha okay. influence lasted 700 years. What, was it the Roman Empire lasted how much? I know over a thousand years, a little over a thousand years. Although I would personally like to, although I would personally, you know, fight and fight for my nation and all this and all these things, I think there is greater glory in sparing your people ultimately. And again, the Puri Pecha can still be found. The indigenous populist group of the Puri Pecha can still be found in Michoacan to this day. That is one fucking hell of a story, man. Not a story. One, one hell of a... Mm-hmm. Of history. Of history, yes. Damn. Yeah, it's fucking both sad and now, you know, it sounds... Oh, shit. That really happened. It's kind of crazy that all this shit mm-hmm. happened, huh? Mm-hmm. Like, you, you know, we don't view it as that. We just view it as history, but people suffered in this shit. Oh, yeah. And... Learning this, obviously, when we learned it back ago, and then kind of the retelling of these historic events, it made it gave me a sense of pride, you know, to say, you know what, I have some heritage from the Puripecha and Empire and from the Puripecha, from the indigenous warriors, and it kind of gave me a little more sense of pride of having uh, some background, you know, through our parents Dang. with that. Same thing on why I have, you know. You know, my pride within this country is because it's, although they all have their issues, it's still something to be proud of. It is. To be a part of. Dang. You know, I didn't know this, and now knowing this, it's just like, I kind of, I want to do some research on where kind of we come from and where, mm-hmm. like, I don't know, kind of like our family tree, oh, tree yeah. because that's only a few people ago. You know, that's mm-hmm. only a few people. Maybe three, four no, probably more. Nah, a little, little more. Yeah, a little more. Well, the Revolutionary Wars we said were what? My great grandpa ago. Yeah. Yeah, great grandpa ago. Yeah, yeah. So, my mom's grandparents ago. Yeah. That was when the Mexican Revolutionary War happened, and then a little, and then around that time, you could still find influence of the Puripecha. I think no, maybe a little later, about five hundred years ago, right? Yeah. The end of the seventeenth century. That is fucking crazy. Yeah. Um. And we so we can find stuff on this on La Universidad de Michoacán. Yeah. Uh, if you type in La Relación de Michoacán, it, okay, it, it'll pop up right there, and that is in Spanish, and it has the entire document. Um. Again, you can find the Florentine. You can look up the Florentine Codex. That's what shows the Aztec talking shit about the indigenous groups around there and particularly they talk shit about the Puripecha a lot and the Chichimecan tribes again. Was there any reason for that? For the them Chichimecan? Just shit. No, them, them just talking shit. Uh, no. no, probably just pride, you know, uh, being the conquerors that they were. And then also the account of Diego de Duran in the history of the Indies of New Spain. Although it's limited resources, there is relatively easy resources to find okay. and then ancient americas i'll i'll go with their videos that's where i got a lot of this information too and then i i re and then i just kind of tied it back to la relacion de michoacan it's uh ancient america is, is, is op as fuck dope as fuck yep uh and then a quick note here something that i forgot to mention of angamuco other lidar scans of angamuco report Evidence that suggests it had a population of 100,000 rather than 300, than 30,000, excuse me. Holy fuck. And it would span in something, again, that would look similar to San Lorenzo. Although San Lorenzo was on a terrace and, you know, the stepped kind of Mm -hmm. flat pyramid looking thing, uh, Tintunzani is estimated to be more than 30,000. And it's pretty much similar. It's Sorry, it's pretty much the same thing with Tintunzani. And all these other regions, they show that, or they indicate of evidence that 
they had more population than what is currently estimated. And same thing with the, while on the topic, pottery and metallurgy, although the Puripecha were known for it, there were pottery and especially metallurgy were going all around Mesoamerica. The Puripechas were just more known for it. The Puripecha had the biggest uh, quarry deposits of bronze and metals and stuff like that. Mm. Um, uh, how how much did it expand in in, in el estado de, Me de Michoacán? Um, Do you know? Yes. I just wanted to see because I know you know where it kind of started and all this stuff, but but I just wanted to know because obviously we're close to Morelia and and whatnot, so that's why I'm like it'd be interesting to to see if I mean how how far it went. Yeah, let me pop up this picture from the most reliable source here, which is uh, Wikipedia. Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you can see the differences between the Aztec Empire. This is also okay. the Aztec Empire, and this is the <laughs> Puripechan Empire. Damn. Yeah, basic, basically. Holy shit, yeah, all of Michoacan. Yep, all of Michoacan. And then... So, like, even, like, Viachuato, all yes. that stuff. Holy yep. shit. And, the border, and again, the border of Michoacan is the receded, the receded, uh, when they receded to fortify their 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 borders and stuff like that. Damn, we even got into, what is that? How do you, is that, I was, wait. That's. That would be. That would be Jali, Jalis, no, it would be Jalisco and. León. And Guanajuato. Yeah. Jalisco and Guanajuato. It, and a little Damn. bit, and a little bit into. Lázaro Cárdenas. Yeah. You know, I've heard that uh, Michoacán has some pretty, pretty beautiful beaches and we have never gone. I know, beautiful beaches and jungles. And jungles, yeah. Damn. This is, this makes me sad because I think probably my next trip I want to really take is to go back to Michoacán. I haven't gone there in five years, but it's not for any reason. It's just for... Because, you know, fucking all that drinking shit. It's, <laughs> it's, you know... Yeah. But now I'm going to go with the whole different mindset. Hey, I'm going to, you know, let's, go visit all these places. Let's visit Lake Pátzcuaro again. Lake Pátzcuaro. Um, is that where they have the, I think, it, Jesus, the, the Pátzcuaro mm, one? I think it is. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. They say that that, that thing's bigger than the, than, the, than the one that's in Brazil and the one that's in Guanajuato. Mm. Could be wrong. We went to the one that's in Guanajuato, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro. It's a great fucking, great fucking story. And again, this is the forgotten empire of Mesoamerica. It is. It is, it is where he is. I don't know if it's Jesus or not, but. Oh, on Lake Pátzcuaro? Yeah. You pull up a picture. I'll pull up a picture. Yeah. Show it. But, and I'll also show, maybe I'll look into more research and see if it is bigger than the one in Brazil and uh, Leon. Mm-hmm. That's fucking dope. That's fucking dope, man. Yeah. I think I'm a. That's probably gonna be my first trip of 2024. But I'm gonna go explore these. Not. Yeah. But that's it. That's it for now. Now keep in mind. Um, this is surf pretty pretty much rudimentary surface stuff. I would like to later bring the Puri Pecha back and kind of dive into more of the Irichiqua Tintunzani empire itself and the civil wars that happened between them and yeah uh, and i don't know there's still much more that can be talked about them but for the most part this is it for the Irichiqua Tintunzani empire or the Puripechan empire or the Tarascan empire it's dope as fuck uh i i the more we talk about it, the more they'll live on. I'll tell you that. Yes, sir. The more we talk about it, the more they'll live on. Well, that's it for this one, my friends. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mesoamerica. The forgot Mexico's forgotten empire. Well, unless you have anything else, I think we should wrap it up. I think we're good. All right. We're good to go on this one. Thank you guys very much for Thank tuning you guys. in. Intellects, episode 11, Mesoamerica, Mexico's forgotten Empire. Let's go. On to Let's the next. Go. Y saludos a toda la raza de Michoacán. <laughs> <laughs>